back again, uh, this time to talk about my first read for Autumn Amour, which was created by the Bookish Bryants, and I'll have their channel linked below. Uh, now, I am not a romance reader, but I was when I was between the ages of about 12 and 30. However, I did keep all of the romance novels that I liked from back when I was reading them, and I ended up pulling them out of storage and decided I was going to reread some of these for Autumn Amour. So the first book that I have read is A Deeper Hunger by Sabine Kells. It's about a woman who has these dreams uh, nearly every night about a man that uh, they have this whole timeless love thing happening, and she dreams of him, but she always dies terribly in her dreams. Uh, and what is actually going on is the man she's in love with is a vampire uh, who has been around for around a thousand years and she keeps being uh, reborn over and over and she always meets him in every life and then she always ends up dying uh, because of something related to him. And so they have never been able to stay together uh, throughout the lifetimes. So that is the premise of this book. And I thought it was a really good premise back then. I really liked it. And I always thought about this book. It was one of my favorite uh, romance novels. Uh, and I always thought I would reread that someday. And of course, this was the perfect opportunity. So when I found this in uh, my box, I got very excited, decided that I wanted to read it right away. <laughs> uh, it's not even September yet, but I went ahead and read it. I think I finished about a week ago. And I must say, I do still like it. I still like the premise. Uh, it did. I did still find it enjoyable to read, but I definitely do not like it as much as I did when I was in my twenties, for sure. Uh, it. It was. There was a lot of flaws in the book that I couldn't. That I wasn't picking apart back then. That now that I'm much older and I don't even read romance anymore, I I was definitely picking the book apart. But you know, none of that detracted from from how much I from enjoying it. So one of my problems with this book was uh, Kaylee, who is the a female protagonist in the book. She's supposed to be between thirty and thirty five years old, but she seems extremely uh, naive and she seems more like a teenager. Like she blushes a lot and she's super insecure. She's just too old to have all this insecurity and shyness surrounding uh, going out with this, this man. His name is Alec. Uh, so I felt that she was an unbelievable character. I, I didn't believe in her at all. I probably didn't notice that because I was in my very early 20s when I read this book. And so I was still very close to those feelings. And then Alec, I did actually think he was an interesting character. The only flaw with his character really, I felt was the author gave him this sort of very simplified Victorian style of speech. And it would have been completely appropriate and fine if the book had been set in those times. Uh, but the book is set in modern times. In fact, they're in Hawaii, so he should not be speaking this way. But otherwise, I thought he was a very interesting character, and I loved the idea that he kept meeting her over and over again, that she just kept being reincarnated. Uh, that's really pretty much all there is to say about this book. Uh, not a lot happened in it. Oh, you know what? There is one more thing. He is, he is a male escort, and she has hired him for two weeks to take her out during her vacation. They go out on three dates. He takes her out every night. Every night he picks her up at her hotel and they go out. And on the third night slash third date, uh, we still have not seen any real conversation between these two. In fact, she completely skips over the dates. It's like he shows up, he picks her up, they say hello, they leave. And then there's a very brief description that says what they did on the date but there's no conversation. We don't see any interchanges between them, nothing. And then all of a sudden he's dropping her off at the hotel. In fact, it was so acute that when they were out on their second date on the second night, she's falling asleep in the car. He had just picked her up and then she's already falling asleep in the car. And I was really confused. I'm like, why is she falling asleep already? I mean, if, if she's this tired, maybe they shouldn't be going out. But what it was is is he, he, the date was over with. He was taking her home. It was after the date. And I didn't even realize that the little two sentences that I had read about what they were doing on the date was the description of the date. <laughs> and so uh, it wasn't until the, the fourth date that they really start having actual conversation and interchange while they're, at, while they're together. And at that point, it did get a lot more interesting. So their conversations after that were, were really good with the exception of her being so 
you know, sort of juvenile. But but yeah, after that, it did pick up quite a bit. And it was a nice relaxing romance. There was no graphic sex in it. There's no super intense conflicts. There's no big tragedies, you know. Uh, it's just a real nice love story, really. So with that, I'll call it the end of the video.